companies are not going to leave the United States anymore without consequences. It's not going to happen. Donald Trump claimed victory for the American worker when he pressured the carrier company to keep 800 jobs at this factory. But deals like this can't bring factory jobs back because most jobs haven't gone to foreign countries. They've just disappeared. It all started when Carrier's layoff announcement went viral. It's to move production from our facility in Indianapolis to Monterey, Mexico. <laughs> They just tell us that they're going to move the companies to um, Mexico. I said, we just got a knife stuck in our back and it's still there. It was unbelievable. Uh, couldn't understand why. Seeing Donald Trump had mentioned Carrier as saying when he gets in office, he's going to fight for us. That made me feel great. Within 24 hours, they will call back. Mr. President, we've decided to stay in Indianapolis. Well, you're going to have a good football team this year, by the way. In Indianapolis, Indiana. Carrier's parent company, United Technologies, receives billions of dollars in government contracts and will now get a $7 million tax break for keeping the factory in Indiana. But that doesn't mean the jobs will stay forever. Studies show that automation, not outsourcing, is the biggest driver of low-skill job cuts. Eight out of every 10 manufacturing jobs lost were due to robotics, computerization on the work floor, more advanced machineries, artificial intelligence. All of those things work together. Since 1980, companies have eliminated 6 million manufacturing jobs nationwide. Foreign trade accounts for about a million of those. At the same time, factories make far more things than they ever did before. Because replacing workers with robots and other innovations makes factories more efficient. In 1980, it took 25 workers to produce a million dollars of product. Today, it takes just six workers. That's what's killing manufacturing jobs. It's because we're so good at it, we don't need as many people to produce the same value of goods at, that we did 30, 40 years ago. Take the Borg Warner Auto Parts plant down the street from the university. It closed in 2009, laying off 750 people. Borg Warner jobs disappeared and were taken over by machinery in Pennsylvania. They didn't go overseas. At the announcement, Trump praised parent company CEO Greg Hayes for investing in the carrier plant. They're going to spend so much money on renovating this plant. And I said, Greg, say that number. You know, he said 16 million. Well, the minimum number is 16. It's going to be in my opinion, a lot more than that. Days later, Hayes clarified that the $16 million investment will automate the plant to cut costs and eliminate jobs. We're going to make a $16 million investment in that factory in Indianapolis right. to automate, to drive the cost down so that we can continue to be competitive. Right. What that ultimately means is there will be fewer jobs. Mm. The assembly lines in Indiana, I mean, great people, great, great people. But the skill, skill set to do those jobs is very different than what it takes to assemble a jet engine. In Indiana, unemployment is low at 4.4%. There are lots of jobs, like in these new warehouses popping up everywhere. But unlike Carrier, the warehouse jobs are mostly non-union, and they pay far less. All the way down, there's just warehouse after warehouse. So the economy is really booming around the area that I live in right now. Uh, this is the Walmart warehouse. And you can see on the sign it says they pay $13.50 to $16.75 an hour. That's probably the highest I've seen. Uh, most only run $13, maybe $15 an hour. So it's half of what I already make a carrier for people that only have high school diploma. Aren't, there's really not many options anymore. So it's almost like if you don't make over $20 an hour, you can't really afford to live somewhere that's going to give your kids a good start in life. Manufacturing is still a powerful symbol of a time when a high school diploma could mean a middle class life. But factory jobs are not coming back by the millions. 
80% of private sector jobs are now in services like retail, education, and healthcare. Even at Carrier, some workers are already preparing for a different kind of job. Most Burmese people, we don't, they don't speak English, so they're working at warehouse. I um, study at Ivy Tech College. I want to be an international nurse. I take an English class two days a week after work. My hope is that I'll be able to keep my job at Carrier to maintain a good quality of life for me and my family. I voted for Donald Trump because nobody else really touched on manufacturing jobs. So I think he kind of sees the importance of Americans having good paying jobs.